Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to go over eight worked examples to show you how to do problems involving the uncertainty principle. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous videos covering the theory on the uncertainty principle and quantum tunneling, as watching these videos will help you understand what we do in this video. So let's get started. Question one says, explain the uncertainty principle in terms of the position and momentum of a quantum particle. Well, straight from the notes, we can say that it is not possible to know the position and the momentum of a quantum particle simultaneously. Question 2 says the uncertainty in an electron's position is given as plus or minus 6 times 10 to the minus 12 metres. Calculate the minimum uncertainty in the simultaneous measurement of the electron's momentum. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the uncertainty in the momentum in the x direction. We know that the uncertainty in the position x is equal to plus or minus 6 times 10 to the minus 12 metres. And we know that Planck's constant h is 6.6c times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. So writing down our equation for the uncertainty principle in terms of position and momentum, we have delta x delta px is greater than or equal to h over 4 pi. Substituting in the numbers gives us 6 times 10 to the minus 12 times delta px is greater than or equal to 6.6d times 10 to the minus 34 divided by 4 pi. And then to get delta px on its own, we can divide both sides by this term here, the 6 times 10 to the minus 12. And that means we can write that the minimum uncertainty in the momentum in the x direction, delta px min, is equal to plus or minus 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 24 kilogram meters per second. And you get this value from plugging it all into your calculator. So notice we were asked to calculate the minimum uncertainty. So that's why we've taken the minimum value, which is the equals part of this inequality sign. Question 3 says an electron is travelling at 4.75 times 10 to the 6 metres per second plus or minus 2%. Determine the minimum uncertainty in its position. Well, the strategy here is that we first need to find the momentum in the x direction px, and then the uncertainty in that value, and then we can use the uncertainty principle to find delta x, the uncertainty in the position. So if we start by finding the momentum in the x direction, that's what we're trying to find. We know the mass of the electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms from the data sheet. The speed v of the electron is 4.75 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. And that means we can use our equation for linear momentum, which is px equals mv. Substituting in our numbers gives 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 times 4.75 times 10 to the 6. And putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 4.33 times 10 to the minus 24 kilogram meters per second. And now we can find the uncertainty in this value, which is going to rely solely on the uncertainty in the speed. Because notice how we were given a speed value plus or minus the uncertainty of 2%, but we don't have an uncertainty in mass. We can just assume the uncertainty of the electron's mass is zero. So that means the only thing that will have an uncertainty here is the speed, which means that the uncertainty in the momentum will be the same as the uncertainty in the speed. So we just need to use that same uncertainty of plus or minus 2%. So we can say that delta px, the uncertainty in the momentum in the x direction, is equal to plus or minus 2% of px. So that is equal to plus or minus 2% of the value we just calculated, 4.33 times 10 to the minus 24, which is equal to plus or minus 0 0.02 times the 4.33 times 10 to the minus 24, just finding the plus or minus 2% of that. And that should give you an answer of plus or minus 8.66 times 10 to the minus 26 kilogram meters per second if you put it into your calculator. And remember, we're assuming that delta m, the uncertainty in the mass, is equal to zero here. And lastly, we're going to use the uncertainty principle to find delta x. So we're trying to find delta x, the uncertainty in the position here, we know that the uncertainty in the momentum in the x direction is plus or minus 8.66 times 10 to the minus 26 kilogram meters per second. And lastly, Planck's constant h is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds from the data sheet. So writing down our equation for the uncertainty principle in terms of position and momentum, we have delta x delta px is greater than or equal to h over 4 pi. Substituting in the numbers gives us delta x times 8.66 times 10 to the minus 26 is greater than or equal to 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 divided by 4 pi. And then to get delta x on its own, we need to divide both sides by this value, 8.66 times 10 to the minus 26. And just like in question 2, we're trying to find the minimum uncertainty in the position. So we're going to take the equals part of this inequality. So delta x min, we can say, is equal to plus or minus 6.09 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Question 4 says to explain the uncertainty principle in terms of the energy and lifetime of a quantum particle. Well, this is worded similarly to the one in terms of position and momentum, but we're just swapping them out for energy and lifetime of a quantum particle. So we can say that it is not possible to know the lifetime of a quantum particle and the associated energy change simultaneously. Question 5 says an electron spends 2.5 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds in an excited state. Calculate the minimum uncertainty and the energy of the electron in this state. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the uncertainty in the energy. We know that the uncertainty in the time is equal to plus or minus 2.5 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds. 
And lastly, Planck's constant h is equal to 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. So writing down our equation for the uncertainty principle in terms of energy and time, we have delta E delta T is greater than or equal to h over 4 pi. We can then substitute in the numbers to get delta E times 2.5 times 10 to the minus 9 is greater than or equal to 6.6 E times 10 to the minus 34 divided by 4 pi. And then to get delta E on its own, we can divide both sides by 2.5 times 10 to the minus 9. And putting that into your calculator and taking the minimum uncertainty in the energy, we can take the equals part of this inequality because that's going to be the lowest value. So we have the minimum is delta E min is equal to plus or minus 2.1 times 10 to the minus 26 joules. Question 6 says an electron has an uncertainty in its energy of plus or minus 2.0 times 10 to the minus 26 joules when in an excited state. Calculate the minimum uncertainty in the time it spends in this state. Well this time we're trying to find the uncertainty in the time. We know that the uncertainty in the energy is equal to plus or minus 2.0 times 10 to the minus 26 joules and we know Planck's constant h is equal to 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. So writing down our equation for the uncertainty principle in terms of energy and time, we have delta E delta T is greater than or equal to h over 4 pi. Substituting in the numbers, we get 2.0 times 10 to the minus 26 times delta T is greater than or equal to 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 divided by 4 pi. And then to get delta T on its own, we need to divide both sides by this term, 2.0 times 10 to the minus 26. And because it's asking for the minimum uncertainty, we're going to take the equals part of this inequality. So we have the minimum uncertainty in the time delta T min is equal to plus or minus 2.6 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds. Question 7 is a wee bit different, and this is to do with units. So it says delta E delta T has the obvious units of joule seconds, the same as Planck's constant. Show that delta X delta PX also has the units of joule seconds. Well, to answer this question, we need to consider the units of the different variables. So if we start with the uncertainty in the position delta X, this has the units of meters, and the uncertainty and the momentum in the X direction delta PX has the units of kilogram meters per second. So we want to show that multiplying the units of delta X and delta PX together will give us the units of joule seconds. So first of all, we want to multiply the units together. So we have meters times kilogram meters per second, which is equal to kilogram meters squared per second. And we're going to label that number one. We can then say that since kinetic energy EK equals a half mv squared, that one joule is equal to one kilogram meter squared per second squared. And that's because the units of mass is kilograms and meters per second are the units for speed, but because it's squared, we'll get meters squared per second squared, squaring both of those terms. And we're going to label this number two. So comparing one and two, we can say that kilogram meter squared per second can be written as kilogram meter squared per second squared times seconds, because seconds on its own, remember, is the same as s to the power of one, and s to the minus two times the s to the power of one will give us back the s to the minus one which you can see over here and remember we said that this was equivalent to one joule hence we've shown that the units are also equivalent to joule seconds lastly question eight says to explain why quantum physics is needed to account for quantum tunneling and give an example of where quantum tunneling is observed well first of all consider an electron near an energy barrier by classical physics we say that the electron will not be able to make it through the energy barrier unless it has enough energy to leap over it i.e. an energy greater than the barrier, and this would be a potential energy barrier. By quantum physics, however, even if the electron has an energy lower than the energy barrier, there is a finite probability that it can tunnel through to the other side. And this is because in quantum physics, we can think about an electron as being a wave function rather than a particle. And an example of this is in alpha decay, in which an alpha particle tunnels out of the nucleus of an atom. So there's a probability that an alpha particle can find itself outside of the nucleus of an atom, even though it doesn't have the energy to escape. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.